the king in the car park, the secrets Richard III took to his grave as his final resting place is revealed. They said it was a miracle when they found him. A medieval king buried under an asphalt parking lot, bones twisted and broken, a spine like a question mark. So doing the Y chromosome work, I found that there wasn't a link between Richard III and the male line relatives who are alive. In 2012, the world watched as archaeologists unearthed what seemed like a lost chapter of English history. But what they didn't know, what no one dared to ask, is what those bones were really hiding. Because the skeleton may have been Richard III's, but his DNA said otherwise. That discovery was only the beginning. In 2025, new science didn't just revisit the king's grave, it dismantled the very story we've told for 500 years. One lie buried another. That's not just history, that's a cover-up. It began like a historical redemption story. A king maligned by Shakespeare, long thought to be a monster, was finally found. And he wasn't what we were told. The skeleton bore 10 violent injuries, eight to the skull alone. Not random, not accidental. He'd been brutally executed, likely after being unhorsed in battle. And then came the spine, the infamous deformity described in plays and propaganda. It was scoliosis, yes, but exaggerated for effect. Richard wasn't a twisted villain. He was a warrior cut down and buried without dignity. The bones gave him humanity, but beneath them something darker remained because bones tell one truth, DNA tells another, and this truth didn't match the crown. DNA doesn't lie. And in 2013, scientists proved the skeleton was Richard III by tracing his mother's line. Mitochondrial DNA, passed from mother to child unchanged for generations, was recovered from the skeleton and matched to a living descendant 17 generations later. It was a perfect match, rare, unmistakable, and undeniable. The world celebrated. The king had been found. His villainous image softened, his place in history restored. But as the crowds cheered, the scientists moved quietly on to their next test. Because another DNA trail remained, the Y chromosome, a marker passed from father to son like a royal signature, and this time what they found didn't match at all. It shattered everything. The Y chromosome test should have confirmed the bloodline. If Richard III were truly a Plantagenet king, his Y DNA would align with modern descendants of Edward III, his great-great-grandfather. But it didn't. It wasn't even close. There was no match, no trace of a shared paternal line. The result wasn't a lab error or statistical fluke. It was definitive. Somewhere in the family tree, a break had occurred. A royal child was not the son of the man everyone believed. In scientific terms, it was a false paternity event. In historical terms, it was treason hiding in plain sight. This wasn't a forgotten affair. It was a lie passed down as... This wasn't just a crack in the family tree, it was a fracture in the crown itself. The Plantagenets ruled by divine right, a claim justified by blood passed from father to son. Their entire legitimacy hinged on that sacred line. But this DNA result didn't just question a father, it questioned a dynasty. If Richard's Y chromosome didn't match the royal line, then the very foundation of the House of York was built on a fiction. For a medieval kingdom, that wasn't a scandal. That was heresy, because if the bloodline breaks, so does the throne. Power, after all, was inherited, and now the inheritance looked forged. Scientists faced a choice, expose the full consequences or soften the blow. In 2014, they played it safe. The official research paper offered two possibilities. Maybe the break happened in the modern descendants, a recent error in the Somerset line. That was harmless. But the other possibility? It meant Richard III himself was never royal to begin with. That truth was too dangerous. So they didn't lie, but they buried it beneath polite language and academic caution. The media focused on the good news. We found a king. But they missed the real story. Because what science had truly found was a fraud in royal robes. For 10 years, the mystery simmered in silence. The mismatch was noted, then politely ignored. But DNA doesn't forget, and in 2025, it came roaring back. A new team launched a deeper investigation combining cutting-edge genomics with ancient bones. Their goal wasn't to speculate, it was to pinpoint exactly where the break occurred. This wasn't about reputation, it was about truth. They gathered samples, including one from the tomb of John of Gaunt, 
an uncle to Richard II and a man whose royal lineage was indisputable. That DNA was pure Plantagenet. The test was simple, match it to Richard's. And when it didn't, the scandal was undeniable. The match with John of Gaunt confirmed something devastating. Richard III's Y chromosome wasn't just different, it was wrong. The real Plantagenet line flowed through Gaunt and through the living Somerset descendants, but not through Richard. That meant the break in the bloodline didn't happen centuries later. It happened in Richard's own immediate family. His grandfather, his father, or Richard himself, one of them wasn't who history claimed. And suddenly, an old rumor stopped sounding ridiculous. The whispered story that Cecily Neville, Richard's mother, had an affair while her husband was away wasn't gossip anymore. It was backed by cold, inescapable genetic proof. Cecily Neville had always been the rose of the royal court, beautiful, devout, untouchable. But the data now suggests her greatest act wasn't grace, it was deception. According to 2025's analysis, her son Richard, Duke of York, the man who launched the Wars of the Roses, was not the biological child of her husband. That one act, a hidden moment behind castle walls, reshaped the future of England. And the irony cuts like a sword, the entire war was about blood legitimacy. Yet the man who cried pure blood may have had none at all. History wasn't just rewritten, it was rigged from the start. Think of what this truly means. Richard, Duke of York, wasn't a rightful heir. That makes his son, Edward IV, the victorious, charming king, an illegitimate ruler. And his sons, the doomed princes in the tower, bastards by blood and by law. Even Richard III, who seized the throne by accusing others of illegitimacy, had no rightful claim himself. Every crown passed in the House of York was grounded in a lie. And yet they ruled. They won battles, they shaped policy all while carrying a secret none of them truly understood. Until now. Because the DNA proved what no historian could, the throne was stolen by a story. The Wars of the Roses weren't just political, they were catastrophic. Entire families were wiped out. Tens of thousands died on muddy fields like Towton and Bosworth. Noble houses collapsed, alliances shattered, children orphaned, and all of it. 30 years of chaos and bloodshed was fought over a birthright that never existed. The Yorkist claim wasn't just weak, it was fiction. And yet they fought with conviction, spilling blood for a crown tied to falsehood. That's the cost of a lie buried too deep. History remembers kings and wars, but forgets why they happened. Now we remember, and it changes everything. But here's the twist that makes it even darker. They may have known. Edward IV, the golden-haired conqueror, obsessed over legitimacy. He married twice, maybe even illegally. His brother, Richard III, claimed Edward's sons were illegitimate, using a secret pre-contract to justify taking the throne. For centuries, we assumed Richard made it up. But what if he didn't? What if he knew the truth about their bloodline, about his own? Maybe it was an ambition that drove him. Maybe it was panic. If he believed the blood was tainted, maybe he thought the only way to save the crown was to burn everything that reminded him of the lie. Imagine Richard III, not as a tyrant, but as a man unraveling. A loyal younger brother, raised on pride in his bloodline, suddenly discovering it was all a fabrication. Maybe it came as a whisper on his mother's deathbed. Maybe it was an old letter tucked away or a secret shared in confidence that broke his world in half. The princes in the tower, his nephews, weren't just obstacles. They were living proof of the lie. To him, their existence was a stain, a threat to the entire idea of monarchy. And if he saw them that way, erasing them wasn't treason. It was purification. The murder of the princes has haunted English history for centuries. We've painted Richard as a cold, power-hungry villain. But the DNA twist reframes everything. What if he wasn't driven by greed, by... but by truth? a horrifying, soul-shattering truth that his family's rule was illegitimate. In that light, his actions weren't calculated. They were desperate. Madness in the face of legacy. If he saw himself as the only one who could cleanse the crown, then every act, every betrayal, becomes part of a grim ritual. Not to seize power, but to bury a bloodline built on deception. What if the villain was a believer? But if Richard was illegitimate, so were his brothers. So were their children which means the entire House of York, every white rose painted on every banner, was a symbol of a lie. And if that line was false, what does it say about the Tudor dynasty that followed? 
Henry VII married Elizabeth of York to unite the warring houses. But if her blood was tainted, then the very foundation of the modern monarchy begins with a calculated deception. We're not just questioning one king, we're questioning every monarch that followed. This wasn't a break in the line, it was a fracture in the crown. Now the questions get louder. Does the current royal family descend from this same thread? If the line was broken then, has it ever been repaired? We may never know how deep the deception goes. But one thing is clear. DNA didn't just identify a body. It exposed the most profound historical scandal in British history. And the silence that followed the 2014 discovery wasn't an oversight. It was strategy. Because truth has consequences. And in 2025, that truth came back, undeniable and unflinching, to remind us that power built on fiction always demands a reckoning. A king was buried under a parking lot and the world cheered when science brought him back. But what they unearthed wasn't just bones, it was betrayal. This wasn't a case of mistaken identity, it was the quiet confirmation of a dynasty built on fraud. Every crown, every title, every royal decree that followed now carries a shadow. And all because one lie, centuries ago, was never questioned. But DNA doesn't forget. And history, once it's cracked open, never closes cleanly. So the question remains, what other truths lie buried, waiting for science to speak louder than legend? Hit subscribe. We're just getting started.